Okay, we'll move on now with our next speaker, our next presenter, who is Stefan Gajic. Uh, hello, everybody. So today I will talk about uh, unhackable application with zero trust. Is it reality or myth? So first of all, it's my first talk ever. So bear up with me. I might be a little nervous, so might make here there some mistakes, but I will do my best. So a disclaimer, it's a myth. Nothing is unhackable. But we will do our best to secure the application as much as we can. So a little bit about me first. My name is Stefan Gajic. Uh, I'm a developer advocate at a company called NetFoundry. The project that I am uh, working on, it's called OpenZT. Open because it's open source, and ZT because it solves zero trust, like zero trust, ZT. Hope you get it. So what is zero trust? Uh, how many of you guys here heard about zero trust? Nice, we have a lot of people here. So in case you guys didn't heard about what is zero trust, basically some of the core zero trust uh, principles are always uh, uh, verify explicitly, don't trust anybody. We use also a least privilege access and we assume that network is corrupted. So we're talking about zero trust networking, just to be specific there. Basically, uh, what we want in our zero trust is we want to have a strong identity, which is very important. We want to have end-to-end -end encryption and also ABC. It stands for authentication and authorization before connect. Uh, so in zero trust, we will see later it has uh, we have like three parts. Let's say of the zero trust, we have network access, zero trust host ac host access, and application access, which we will mostly talk about in this during this presentation. So a colleague of mine made this awesome uh, comparison with Harry Potter. Uh, you can find the link there. It's basically. Uh, most of the solutions for zero trust networking nowadays are non-magical zero trust. They're open to open internet, uh, they're open to IPs. Of course, there are some partially magical zero trust that gives your, uh, that gives like invisibility, while the magical zero trust is, goes to application level. And this little guy as Harry Potter is called Ziggy. That's a piece of pasta. Pasta is Ziti. I also have it in my t-shirt right here as a ninja. So uh, as I promised here, we have uh, three parts of uh, <clears throat> zero trust. So we have uh, zero trust network access, which is great because we're having zero trust during, in our local network, right? We want to secure ourselves. Uh, the second one, even better, is zero trust host access. Uh, we're using an agent there. Uh, it's basically a tunneler. Uh, in our company, we recently uh, made a, uh, made it like a, a sidecar solution for one of the orchestrators for Kubernetes, with, who wanted a secure application but didn't want to go uh, all the way to application level and that is the third and the most secured one is zero trust application access where we literally put zero trust into our application itself so now we have like security literally built in instead of bolted on like we have with let's say the first solution so how do we put zero trust into an application. How can we do it? We can use SDK. Uh, so SDKs allow us to integrate zero trust at the application level. It enables network endpoint clients allow uh, a device to dial, access, or bind host to service. It provides an uh, authentication interface for X509 certificate flows, Basically, most important thing, no open ports, completely invisible to the underlay network. This is all great, but let's see real world examples of code. So how many developers are we having here? Raise your hands. Oh, not many. I hope you guys know a little bit of code. 
because there is some example right here in Golang or Go programming language. So we have a really simple server here. Like it has two endpoints, hello and add. Uh, on line 13, we have like listen and serve on the port 8090. Just a very simple one. What we did is like slight adjustments here. I don't know. Oh, you can see it. Great. I didn't know if you will see it. So what we have here is uh, on the line uh, 34, we have created a ZT listener, which actually gives us an uh, uh, gives an access for, uh, to implement uh, on the lines five and six OpenZT SDK for Golang. There is also like a bunch of SDKs for C, Python, or Kotlin, whatever language basically there is programming language. Uh, so uh, we see in line 17, that is very important. We're not uh, listening and serve anymore on the local network. We are actually having an overlay network. Create ZT listener that we are calling right there. And in line 47, you see it returns our listener. So what is an overlay network? So. Uh, this is some internet, let's say. We have a controller, and in OpenZT network, we have two edge routers and two routers. They're all interconnected, forming a mesh network, which is very important. So uh, all these are, these little locks are secured with mutual TLS, which makes them end-to-end security, which we, which I talked earlier about it. So uh, maybe a little bit better example is this one where you can see like some client or server and at the end we see API service and we see a mesh network as well. And this is like the flow of data, how bytes, uh, packets are flowing through and it literally has no listening ports and no holes in the firewall at all. So it all looks really great and really awesome. Like it's totally secured. We, everybody wants it, but let's see some real world example. So we built a demo, which uh, 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 I will show you guys right now. Uh, yeah, there we go. So this is a demo application that we have. And uh, here we can put, we can put our uh, email to edit OpenZT, or if you don't want, you can just go, don't bother me, but I, I recommend you to put your email. So there we go. We have like an awesome, <clears throat> awesome, uh, landing page here. Uh, if we clone this repo right here, it's public totally so everybody can access it. And after we have it, we are want to have token. Why would we need token? We need a token for creating a strong identity, which I mentioned earlier. So after I got the token, It's right here. And I will right there. I will put my token inside where I cloned my repo. Appetizer. Uh, so you can see it's right there. Great. So what uh, what does it mean? Now we have a token. What can we do right now? Uh, right now we can run the sample program. We can run the sample program and we can see what's actually going on in there. Uh, 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 so let's do it. Let's bring up the terminal. Let me get this uh, 
we have three examples. So the first example will be just a simple reflect server where we will have um, uh, awesome. So you guys can see it. I didn't, I didn't know if it will be visible or not. Uh, so what we have here is we have a, a strong identity, a JWT token, uh, enrolling it automatically and uh, making a JSON file. So as you can see, it's written here. Uh, we're connected to our Reflect server service and we can send some bytes. We can say, hello, Buddha. There we go. Send hello Budapest. Received hello Budapest. You can also say see ya. There we go. See ya. So uh, we have like very secured network here and to end encryption. Uh, what else we have? We have some math example. So I will just put here. Uh, our math example. I'm using existing file as you can see here and I have a result of three. Awesome. Our next example is curl. So for me this is the most interesting one. So we are connected to a secured service at HTTP services you can see here. Uh, we are using existing file, of course, and we say hello from IP17. This is not this IP address at all. This is AWS. We shouldn't be accessing this. This is magic in our zero trust. This is our server in AWS. So uh, what we did there, it's explained here in this graph. On the client side, we have reflector, mat, and curls. Uh, it's going through an open ZT fabric, a mesh network, and we have a server side app server right there. So uh, basically, that is our small demo that I uh, that I prepared here. Uh, so you have my information there, Stefan Geic, my email. You can scan this card. It also has my professional and some of my personal information as well. And OpenZT project that I am working on. Uh, you have all the links here in this slide. OpenZT.io, we have Appetizer, the demo that I just showed you, uh, our GitHub repository, Twitter, and our awesome Discord, discourse group, which is like a forum where uh, our developers are very active with, uh, with answering any questions and anything you guys have. So if you're interested in trying out OpenZT, totally free open source project uh, solving zero trust in the application level itself. So you can scan this code and get OpenZT. So I have still five, six more minutes. Did a little bit uh, faster with the presentation as we were uh, shortage out of time. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me. And I hope you enjoyed and I hope this presentation was interesting and you learned something new. Thank you so much. Stefan, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.